Less than two months before Election Day, the broadest ever review of spending by special interest groups to influence both policy and the outcome of elections. The New Jersey Election Law Enforcement Commission, ELEC, found that from 1999 to 2013, the top 25 spent $311 million. Is there a direct correlation between what they spent and what they got in return? For the answer, we turn to ELEC's executive director, Jeff Brindle, who's joining us from Trenton. Thank you so much for being with us, Mr. Brindle. Thank you for having me. Who were the top five contributors? Well, the, we can say that the, the, the top uh, uh, contributor was uh, the New Jersey Education Association. Uh, we also had the IBEU. Uh, actually, four uh, labor unions were uh, um, the, the top four. And then we had the Realtors Association, which was uh, the, the fifth in, in terms of contributions, in terms of uh, activity with regard to lobbying, as well as with uh, independent expenditures. I know that Governor Christie has been at odds from time to time with labor unions. Is, <clears throat> is it clear that the money labor unions are spending are to, um, to influence policy that goes against Governor Christie in some way? Yeah, I mean, there, you know, there have been a number of, uh, you know, pretty significant issues with regard to education over the last, uh, you know, couple of years. Uh, you know, certainly with regard to uh, charter schools and with uh, regard to, uh, you know, pensions and, you know, other uh, <clears throat> important issues that have to, have to do deal with education. And certainly it's been in the last couple of years that we've seen uh, a real uptick in uh, NGAA spending, uh, something like uh, $20 million uh, last year in 2013. Uh, was spent $14 million of that in independent expenditures. Are the biggest donors liberal or conservative? Does it cut both ways? How does that work? You know, I think it, 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 that's really hard to say, but I think it, it really cuts both ways. I mean, as, as you could see, uh, labor unions, uh, you know, eight out of the 25 uh, of these groups, uh, top groups, uh, were labor unions. But you also have uh, ide other ideological groups. You have some party-affiliated uh, groups that are involved. You have uh, trade trade association groups. So it really runs the gamut. Uh, it's really mm -hmm. difficult to say. What do P PAC contributions tell us, from contributions from political action committees? What, what do they tell us and why? And is this the whole story? Well, I think, I think the real story about, about PACs is that in the last, uh, j just uh, from 2013 over from 2012, there's 148% increase in uh, in PAC spending. Uh, and I think one of, the, one of the reasons why that there has been an uptick in that is because of the pay-to-play law that was, that was enacted in 2006. Uh, you know, that, that was a, a law that, uh, you know, included political parties in it as well as candidates. And we saw during that period of time uh, less money being raised by political parties and, and by candidates, and it was during that period of time that we saw an increase in political action committees again. So I think, uh, you know, certainly one of the ramifications of the of the pay-to-play law uh, was for uh, uh, PAC activity to uh, kind of get stirred up. All right, Jeff uh, Brindle, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you uh, for having me.